Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Avoid the Tire Wall podcast. Today we are joined by a very special guest, Megan Jilks. Do you want to tell us about yourself, Megan? Well, first of all, thank you so much for having me on the podcast. Um, so I'm 20 years old and I'm a racing driver and I've uh, raced in things like the W Series in Formula 2000 in the US and Canada and also in Formula Ford. What is your dream road car? Um, my dream road car would probably have to be an Aston Martin. I'd say the Aston Martin DBS. Um, just a really great car to be able to to drive around and even though on the roads you might not be able to drive it as quickly as it deserves to be driven it would be pretty neat to be seen in one of those. What is your overall favourite track? My favourite track I'd have to say would be my home track back in Canada which is Moss Sport. Um, Some people know it better as Canadian Tire Motor Sport Park. And I love it because, first of all, it's my home. It's an hour away from where I used to live in Canada. And the people there are so friendly. I've gotten to know all the marshals, everyone who works there. And the track itself is brilliant. It's got so much elevation change and really fast corners. And it just it, it's a track that's complemented my driving style. And I love going there. Um, What's the best thing about racing? There's a lot of great things about racing. I love the adrenaline rush of trying to go as quick as you possibly can in something with a lot of horsepower. In my case, you know, sometimes downforce, sometimes without downforce. So you're having to work with the mechanical grip and trying to go as fast as you possibly can in that. Then there's the thrill of the competition as well, racing wheel to wheel with people at 100 miles an hour. Nothing beats that. What's the most difficult part of racing? For me, that sort of depends on what series it is that I'm competing in. So when I did Formula 3 in the W Series, I struggled a bit with the physicality of it. So I really had to work a lot at the gym trying to get fit and strong enough to be able to uh, turn what is a very heavy steering wheel with a lot of downforce um, for, you know, half an hour races. In Formula Ford, which is what I'm racing at the moment, um, one of the most challenging aspects of it is the racecraft. You're in battles with seven, eight cars all fighting it out for the podium positions. And it's uh, it's really intense when when you're in the middle of that pack trying to trying to get up as many positions as you can. So at the moment, that's something else that I'm really having to uh, to work at. And those are those are some of the challenges, but also part of the fun of racing. What is your least favorite series in racing? My least favorite series, I wouldn't say I have one because I love watching anything with uh, with wheels and an engine and I love driving anything with wheels and an engine so really if anyone came up to me and said hey would you want to have a drive in absolutely any series I would be more than happy to say yes. Which series that you've competed in is your favourite so far? series that I've competed in that's my favourite would probably have to be the, the W series is definitely one of them because it was on the world stage and it was an overall amazing experience and something that I couldn't have dreamed of coming from, from piloting and Formula V but really everything that I've raced I've thoroughly enjoyed whether that be a Formula V with you know 60 horsepower no downforce and uh, a Volkswagen Beetle engine basically whether it's that or something as powerful as a Formula 3 car I've I've loved every minute of every car that I've driven. Um, I don't know if I'm going to say this right or not but what is F1600 Ontario? Uh, F1600 so that's Formula 1600 it's the equivalent of Formula Ford in the UK but the Canadian version. So I raced in that in 2020 before coming over to the UK to do Formula Ford here. And um, the cars, just to give a bit of background on it, 
they have a uh, in Canada they have a Honda engine and they the chassis that I used was a Piper but there's all various different chassis that you've got and they don't have wings and they use treaded basically road tires and the racing is really competitive in it because you don't have that downforce and because you have only the mechanical grip to rely on it's um it's really close racing, lots of slipstreaming, and something that I really enjoyed doing. And it led to me coming over to the UK to race in Formula Ford here. So really a great series. And, you know, anyone who might be listening who's in Canada, something that I definitely would recommend. What is it like racing in Canada? I mean, racing anywhere in the world is fairly similar. You've got the same goal of beating the competition, getting to the checkered flag first. The racing itself in Canada is, um, I found a little bit less aggressive than it is over here in the UK. People tend to leave a little bit more racing room, but it, in the end, it's all um, it, it's all the same same idea. I really enjoyed racing in Canada. Like I said before, my, my favorite track is Moss Sport. So racing there was a really neat experience for me. And um, yeah, it's led to me being able to come over and race in Europe as well, which I've I've gotten a great amount of experience out of. So yeah, I, I've loved racing over in Canada, and it's really where I uh, where I started in cars, and uh, has done a lot for me. Do you have any regrets about being a racing driver? Absolutely none. I've really, really enjoyed it. And I've had, you know, the ups and downs of racing. You have you have your big wins that you're really excited about, but then you also have, you know, the crashes and the incidents and the weekends that just don't go as well. But overall you go racing because you love it and you can you can take the lows along with the highs. And there have been plenty of moments where I've been disappointed with how I've done or I've had big crashes but ultimately you know the the good weekends more than make up for it controversy found in the w series for me i found it as a great platform to be able to get myself racing on the world stage because i could never dream about racing a formula three car prior to the w series coming into existence and I think that a lot of girls, both on the W Series grid at the moment and just out there racing for themselves right now, would would agree with that, that they, they couldn't have dreamed of, you know, racing an F3 car, racing at big events. Like in 2019, we followed the, uh, the DTM championship around Europe and this year they're following Formula One. It's uh, it, it was really a dream come true for me to be able to, to race at that level. And it's something that I'd definitely be aiming towards again in the future. Are there team principals in the W Series? No, not in the year that I did it. So in 2019, it was all one team, high-tech GP, that were running the whole series. And um, so, so we didn't... We, we weren't sort of separated into teams. It was every driver had an engineer and a mechanic working on their car. And we'd actually um, swap cars every weekend and with it swap the engineers and the mechanics that we had. So there wasn't any sort of team principle. It was all basically we're all one big team. And uh, at the same time, we were all sort of fighting it out for ourselves, trying to get as high up the grid as we could. What is the W Series all about? So the W Series is a all-female championship it run in Formula 3 cars. Um, and its goal is to try and get more women into motorsport and more women racing professionally in Europe, but also worldwide. So the grid was extremely international, both at the moment and in the year that I did it. And it was... Uh, it was really inspirational to see all of these fantastic female racing drivers going out there and showing everyone what we can do. If you could race any race track in the world, which one would, would it be? Why? It can either be a current or a disused race. 
I would say that the track that I would want to race at most would be Monaco because I think that if you've raced at Monaco, then you've made it in motorsport, and that would definitely be uh, be something that I'm I'm aiming towards. You know, in the future, someday making it again as a professional racing driver. So yeah, Monaco for sure. Who have been your heroes and inspirations when, like, growing through motorsport? Um, so probably my biggest motorsport hero would have to be a lady named Davina Galitza. She raced in Formula One, or she tried to qualify for Formula One races in the uh, 1970s, but unfortunately due to some uh, sort of inferior equipment, she couldn't quite make the uh, the starting grid for any of the races that she was at. Um, she was a huge inspiration for me because she was my first driving coach. So I met her when I went to a racing school to try and get my racing license. And I kept with her, in touch with her ever since then. And um, even through the W Series, she continued to give me some great advice and came and gave me some coaching at some of the races I've done. And even to this day, I still keep in touch with her as a mentor and as a friend. Um, what is your toughest challenge been? My toughest challenge in motorsport, I would say, would have been in the first round of the W Series. First of all, getting into the W Series in itself was a huge challenge because um, it, it's they, they chose from, I think, about 150 different applications of which 56 of us went to a testing event in Austria and then a further 28 of us went to a selection event in Almeria before we were uh, sort of chosen as the final grid of 18. And uh, there was a lot of talent in that and trying to get into the W Series um, took a fair amount of testing, a lot of work in in the gym, and a lot of uh, a lot of preparation all across the board to try and get myself ready for that. And then in the W series itself, um, in the first race, I unfortunately had a a crash with um, one of the drivers, and it was completely my fault. And I knew it as soon as I'd done it that you know it was on live television. There was no escaping that one. And um, bouncing back from that was definitely challenging for me, but I managed to come back in the end and uh, I, I ended up winning one of the races. So, yeah, that was definitely a challenge that I had to overcome as well. Um, what are your different emotions have you experienced doing most? Um, well, modern sport is really a sport of highs and lows. So, I've uh, I've gotten the highs of winning races and the lows, like I said before, of crashes like that W Series crash. So, yeah, you you really get the full range with racing, and that's part of uh, part of the excitement is you know trying to uh, trying to get as many of those those good days as you can. So yeah, I've uh, I've really really gotten to have a very um, very emotional experience with you know all throughout my racing career all the all the different things that I've done but yeah I wouldn't change any of it even even the bad days. So how did you first get into motorsport? So I first drove a kart when I was living in Barbados. I used to live in Barbados when I was uh, nine years old and I drove a kart that belonged to a friend of my dad's son and the first time that I drove I was hooked immediately I I mean I was terrible on the first day but I absolutely loved it and um, since then I just kept plugging away at it in carts and improving and getting quicker and then I went on to do some racing in carts in, uh, in Canada after that and moved up to cars and here I am now. So what was the path like to get to your current position? Right, so after I uh, after I started karting in Barbados and then continued in 
Canada. I did sort of the main main Canadian kayaking championships that there were, and uh, then graduated to kayas when I was 16 years old into Formula Vs. And I did two seasons of that, along with a little bit of testing in a Formula 2000 in, uh, in the US and Canada. And then heard about the W Series in 2019. And I thought, what an amazing opportunity for me to really try and progress my motorsport career. So I applied for that and eventually got selected. So I raced in that in, uh, in 2019, but wasn't one of the ones that was uh, in the top 12 of the championship. So that meant that I wasn't invited back for 2020. So I thought I'll try and get out and get some more experience in a different series. Um, and, you know, hopefully at some point try and get back into the W series. But unfortunately, COVID put a bit of a damper on that. So that meant that any racing that I was hoping to do in Europe got, um, got postponed to this year. So I did Formula 1600 in Canada. I got 13 podiums and two pole positions in that. And then that led to me coming over to the UK to do the Formula Ford Festival and the Walter Hayes Trophy last year. And um, since then, I've, I've been over here doing the full Formula Ford National Championship. So that's really how I got to where I am today. Um, how much do you, how much time do you spend per week or per day working out? Um, I do some form of sport pretty much every day. So as well as uh, the racing, I also play tennis um, and I do quite a lot of running. So I, uh, along with that, I also do some strength training to try and build up my arms to be able to, uh, to turn that really heavy steering wheel that I was talking about a few moments ago. Um, but yeah, I do train pretty much every day. During lockdown, how much time did you spend working out in comparison to like the post, like before lockdown? Um, if anything, probably a bit more time was spent training because there was really nothing else that I could do. So um, I'm in university at the moment. And so around my studying, I would uh, I, I'd try and get in as much uh, as much fitness work as I could to really help my racing. When oh, I can't read. Best moment of your career so far. I would have to say that the best moment of my racing career so far would have been my reverse grid race win in Aston. That was an amazing day and something that I didn't go into it expecting. But when I was able to hold off the likes of Jessica Hawkins, Alice Powell, Sabra Cook, Sarah Bovey to take the win by three thousandths of a second in the W series, which is a series where the best women drivers in the world compete, it was it was just the best day I could have imagined. So definitely that's the highlight of my racing career so far. But I hope that someday in the future I'll be able to say something even more exciting. I'm um, linking into a previous question we said before. Um, when you were younger, did you always want to be a racing driver or did you want to change your mind and do something different? So when I was uh, nine, ten years old and started kayaking, I basically decided that I want to work in Formula One. And at the time, I thought I want to be an F1 driver because what what kid that's gotten into kayaking doesn't say that? Then reality sort of hit and I realized that there might not be the budgets, the opportunities to be able to, to make it that far in my career. So my backup plan since then has um, has been to become an engineer, and I'm currently an engineering student at um, Imperial College in London, and trying to uh, graduate there to then get a job in Formula One as an engineer. So the dream has always been to work in F1. How I get there has just slightly changed along the way. Okay, so that concludes the questions. In 2020, which team won both the Formula 2 and Formula 3 championships? 
Um, F2 was won by, well, I, I guess it must be Prima. Yep. Oh, thank God I got one correct. <laughs> I can relax like, now. <laughs> how many teams competed in the 2005 US Grand Prix? 2005, was that the year that, like, no one did it? I don't know, I wasn't born then. Oh, <laughs> um, I was, I was one, but okay. I was four. I'm going to say three. Yes! Is it three? Yep. Um, I would just hit myself in the eye. How many race wins has Charles Leclerc had, and where were they? Um, I couldn't tell you how many he's had. Uh, I can tell you some of, I know he's won at Monza. Yep. Um, okay, I'm going to just throw a number out there and say five. Five wins. Nope. Too low? Uh, too high. Too high, okay, four. Nope. Three. Nope. No ways. Two? Yep. In Spa and Monza. I think that's like half a point. That one. Uh, how many titles did Juan Manuel Fangio win? Uh... Three? Five. Five, my goodness. Oh my gosh. My historic F1 knowledge is definitely lacking. He got them in 51, 54, 55, 56, and 57. Uh, what team was Jensen Button driving for when he won his title in 2009? Come on. Yes. I know that because I've met Ross Braun. <laughs> That was cool. It was pretty cool. All right. How many motor racing circuits, current and former, are there in the UK? Oh, boy. That's... Okay. I'm going to try and name some, and I'm going to definitely miss some out. Uh, F1 only, or just... Uh, just general, general motor racing. Oh, boy. Okay. Um... Donington, Silverstone, Snesson, Alton Park, Brands Hatch, Knock Hill, Anglesey, Pembry. Um, Croft. Uh, I've already like lost count. So I think I said nine. But there's a lot, a lot more than that. Um, I'm just going to say 16. 26, approximately. 26. Wow. Uh, how long is the Nürburgring Nordschleife? 14 miles. Yes. That's stupid. Um, what's Ferrari's nickname? Like the team, the the scuderia, I guess. I... The prancing horse. Oh. By how many points did Mick Schumacher win the twenty twenty Formula Two season by over Callum Eilat? This is so random. I don't remember. I just remember it went to the last round. Um, so I'm going to say fairly. Big number, I'm going to go with 12. Oh, two off. Oh. It was 14. And this is, like, really difficult to tell because my printer went a bit haywire. I'm just going to... That's okay, I could tell Donington. Yes. I just want to ask you what the fuck? Weird now. Uh, yeah, it was Donington. <laughs> You're only, like, the third person to get that right so far. Really? 
It's a wonderful track. I love that place. <laughs> you are now second in our like Avoid the Tire Wall podcast quiz master challenge. Yeah. <laughs> there was only one point in it. I think so. he had six and a half and you got five and a half, so it was really close. <laughs> I'm all right with that. <laughs> And this rounds up another episode of Avoid the Tire Wall. We would like to say a huge thank you to special guest Megan for coming and joining us today and ending our Women in Motorsport Month. We hope you've enjoyed this podcast and make sure to subscribe and like our channel and also let us know anyone you'd like to see on this podcast in the future.